بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على ملا نبي بعد Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled To Us The Origin And to all of those who will be joining with us now and later Or later through our Facebook page, YouTube channel and live streaming via Channel S website It's a program that's been broadcasted from the studio of Channel S watched on Sky 814 Our tonight's topic for discussion is the Holy Prophet and Elders Today we'll be looking into the aspect of what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command, how do we treat our elderly people, and what is the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu how did he engage, interact with people who are older or elderly that we know in our society. We knew that in past we hardly saw any old age home in the Muslim countries, but now in recent time we do see there are a lot of elderly homes, there are nursing homes for elderly people, and it looks like children have somehow um, left or have disassociated themselves with elderly people. All of this and many more, inshallah, we will be touching in our tonight's discussion. And to discuss this topic, we have with us a very honorable and respected Imam and Khatib, who is the Imam and Khatib of the London Central Mosque and the Islamic Cultural Center, who is the, in fact a graduate of Al Azhar University and, in fact, the first British Bangladeshi Imam and Khatib of the Regent's Park Mosque, Fadilat al Sheikh Qadi Lutfu Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for coming and joining with us so late at night. It's my pleasure. Just um, I would like to start our program by asking the question, first of all, why did we choose this particular topic? Why is it specifically we touched upon elders? Okay. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah alladhi akmala lana deenana wa atamma alayna ni'matahu wa radhiya lana al-islam deena. Allahumma radhina billahi rabba wa bil-islam deena wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallama nabiyyan wa rasoola. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ثم ما بعد uh, I uh, testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and he is one and he has no partners and I also testify that the holy prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him is the final messenger and slave of Allah the Almighty now, uh, if every one of us remember, um, last um, Friday we were talking about the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and children. So perhaps some elderly people might get upset. So I thought like we should talk about the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and elders. So how he was with elders. We also covered a uh, few topics, maybe on family and children and how to be with children. But I think it's about time that we need to uh, talk about the elderly people. And if everyone remembers um, that we, we, we said, we mentioned last Friday, that our Prophet wasallam was comparatively more kind and compassionate and more merciful with the people who are comparatively weaker in society. And the goodness of a person appears when in his dealing and in his behavior with the people who are below them or who are under them or who are weaker than them. But obviously, normally, by nature, we try to be good with someone who is probably better than us in terms of stage or post or rank or someone who is like bigger than us. But uh, uh, the beauty and true character of a person appears when you're good with someone who is actually weaker than you, maybe poorer than you, maybe um, who, who is, who is uh, under your authority or under your, uh, your supervision. So the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was extremely kind with the people who are weak in the society. So we mentioned he, would, he was extremely kind with the orphans, with Masaki and with Fuqara. And um, we have seen in numerous prophetic traditions. Um, now, I want to mention a hadith regarding, just to prove myself that it's, it's correct, the Prophet ﷺ was comparatively kind with the people who are weaker. So this, there is a hadith in the, um, uh, in, the, in the book of Imam Abu Dawood, rahimahullahu rahmatan wasi'a, on the authority of Abu Darda, uh, Uwaymir radiallahu anhu, uh, that, the, that he said that I have heard from Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول أبغوني في الضعفاء help me to find the weak people in the society listen to that very carefully help me to find the dhu'afa, the da'if, the weak ones in the society 
And then he said, فَإِنَّمَا تُنصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ And then he said, you people, you are granted your rizq, your sustenance, your income, your good life, and you get help and victory because of the weak ones amongst you. Subhanallah. So you may have somebody who is less able in your family, but you never know that because of him you're getting the risk that probably you've been granted with, um, the money that you're earning. That's very good. There's a supplementary question to that is, when you say we people, a lot of us we do notice, or in, or in our community we do mm -hmm. see, if unfortunately if a child is born with uh, some challenges, physical challenges. Yes, yes, yes. Now, not only the parents, even the extended rela relatives we see mm. are not compassionate towards Subhanallah. that particular child. I mean, that's that's extremely sad um, because you see, sometimes we think someone may be less able in our family, but maybe the the barakat, you know, the blessings and the money and the uh, and the and the respect that we are probably uh, achieving it is because of that person individual in the family we never know. you never know because of his fortune because of his luck probably allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving and this hadith makes it clear it says فَإِنَّمَا تُنصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ you people are helped and you you get the victory and you get the the rizq because of the weak ones amongst you very true but then again i mean just to cover it up we the society is based on people. Even the society we see, for example, we live in a Western society where we see a lot of extra precaution facilities are there for people yep. who are less able. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if we, look, if we look at our Eastern part of the world, mm -hmm. What we sort of have. facilities are there in place? Unfortunately, for uh, we, we even to start with, say wheelchair access. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unfortunately, we Muslim, uh, like I mean, uh, when we talk about the Muslim world or probably the Eastern world or Muslim world in general, I think there's incredible amount of work need to be done in order to help and care and love, show the love and affection to uh, the people who are weaker in the society. And that was actually that took place that existed at the time of Khilafah al Rashida mm. that existed. Uh, during the Muslim empires and Muslims, early Muslims, they had this kind of facilities. But unfortunately, we, we lost. Many the of those we lost, uh, unfortunately. But also when we talk about the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his oh, compassion right. um, for the weak people in society, we see Bible and Christianity come with a similar uh, and same kind of uh, approach. opinions, approach. So we see in the Bible, the Bible is consistent and clear in its message about those who are least able to fend for themselves. In the Old Testament, God mentions widows and orphans among those who should be singled out for special care and protection. Jesus continues his pattern of divine care by heaping scorn on those who would go so far as to foreclose on widows homes um, which is mentioned in Matthew and also James even says that caring for widows and orphans are the premier fruits of true worship of God so we can see Christianity has similar approach as Islam and these are the common things that we agree especially the people of Ahlul Kitab the people of the books we have many things in, in common so again uh, Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was a reminder uh, you know, of the uh, scriptures of early prophets. So therefore we see Prophet Sallallahu he reformed and he modified uh, or reformed or maybe corrected the mistakes and errors that took place in the early books. Uh, uh, and, and, and so Prophet Sallallahu more like a reformer than completely uh, someone who came with a complete new strange religion. Um, just to understand it, when you say corrected, is it because of the human intervention, yes, because yes, of yes. the other scripture? It is because of, of the uh, human intervention, some sort of amendments. Uh, because the wahi won't have anything. Yes, so um, people kind of took things out and added things in, hmm. so a lot of innovations took place. Okay. And so therefore, Prophet Sallallahu who came to remind the people of the world about the message of the early prophets alayhim salam. Now, we also look, uh, when we look at the Holy Quran Al-Kareem, we can find Allah the Almighty tells us the details of a journey of a human being in this world, his stages, how many stages people go through, human, a human being goes through. So Allah the Almighty said in Surah Ar-Rum, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا 
يخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير In this beautiful verse Allah the Almighty tells us the details of the stages of a human being so he says Allah the Almighty created you from a state of weakness we were weak when we were created when we came to this world we didn't know how to eat we didn't know how to help ourselves we didn't know how to even walk we didn't know how to talk uh, we didn't know anything in this world people had to take care of us our mothers our fathers our elders they have to they had to take care of us and then Allah says that he created us from the state of weakness then gradually Allah the Almighty gave us strength he taught us things he uh, he he taught us how to speak how to walk how to eat how to take care of ourselves and then we became like uh, teenagers we start becoming strong some of us start become, uh, like building our muscles so we become like strong people and then we become youth so this is a, a stage of stage of strength and then he says but that's not the permanent thing he takes us back to another stage again and he says thumma min ba'd quwwatin dha'fan wa shayba then i take you back to the weakness the state of weakness and the gray hairs the state of gray hairs so nowadays we see people when we're 30 35 we start getting gray hairs i mean we 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 kind of easily get old um so allah the almighty says that he takes us back to the stage of weakness and gray hairs so we start losing some of our strength uh, a lot of illnesses come and afflict us um maybe like we lose this the, the power of our sight and maybe like our teeth and and so we generally become weak so then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says yakhluqu ma yasha he does whatever he likes he he creates whatever he wishes to create up to him yakhluqu ma yasha wa huwa al-alim al-qadir he's all knowing and the most mighty powerful now you can see these are the stages so that we realize we our ending is again weakness we become weak and that is the stage of uh being old or elderly people now um after talking about the details of a of a human being and his different stages ضعف uh, then quwwah then ضعف and shayba um the stage of state of weakness then then uh, strength and uh, uh, and then after that after strength again the state of weakness and the gray hairs um i would like to also mention here the virtues of the elderly people now many of us in we in our society we we look at our elderly people our old amader jara murabbi jara sen amader jara bado sen uh we look at them as something like a uh, less significant and less important and i have seen and observed this 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 um nature or this notions in many youngsters of our society of our community when they look at the elders they just like have a negative oh these are elders these are like churches um, these are you know uh, uh these are haji subs and so they have a negative kind of uh views just to understand him over there because their understanding is they have some sort of old school mentality or yeah. understanding yeah. or sometimes even the youth even say um they do not think like us they, yes. they don't, because they were not brought up in this country yes. they have imported yes. the um culture or the understanding from other parts of the yes. world which does not uh, it's sometimes looks like in contradiction they don't get along get along yeah. that's the main thing but then again this will remain because wala yazaluna mukhtalifin i mean we grew up in one family and then we see even though we are in the same society growing up we'll have difference between us and our parents because old school new schools the world is changing it's constantly changing and uh, and then you've got conflict of uh, like people who are who came from back home who grew up actually born and bred in back home and who is growing up who are growing up here so there's gaps in communication gaps in understanding gaps in cultures so there are many differences but that doesn't give us any or any any authority or that doesn't give us that doesn't allow us to um disrespect or look at our elders in significantly or something less important in our society what about when 
the youth sometimes we see, uh, alhamdulillah, our youths are very practicing, we do see mm -hmm. and notice that some of the teaching they say that their, the elderly people say might not be directly in line with the Quran or Sunnah. Mm -hmm. Now, as youth, mm -hmm. as younger people, younger mm -hmm. generation, how should they approach, even if they know, according yeah. to their understand, it's yes. not directly related yes. to the Quran or Sunnah? I think that <coughs> any correction can be made. Islah is needed and we all can correct each other but there has to be some respects we have to follow the the prophetic mannerism when we approach an elderly person i can correct my father i can correct my mother but that doesn't mean that i have to be disrespectful i have to be rude or harsh i mean i can convey my message i can deliver my message and then if they don't want to listen it's up to them i mean it's there will be a count is it with hikmah but allah yeah again hikmah wal mawidat al hasana uh, the wisdom and the beautiful such, um, beautiful speech which which never uh, you know we can we can never undermine mentioned in the holy quran now the virtues of elderly people what is the virtues meaning people in our society sometimes we think oh me him no difference old young no difference but islam teaches us the difference of respect and mannerism and virtues so uh, there is a hadith uh, in the book of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad on the authority of Abu Hurayrat radiyallahu anhum uh, and then he said anna rasulallahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal that the uh, messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said khiyarukum atwalukum a'maran the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best one of you is the one who had the long life the longest life so listen to this hadith. The best one of you amongst you uh, are the ones who had the longest life. Atwalukum a'maran wa ahsanukum a'malan. But at the same time, they had the best amal, the best deeds. So it's not only about being old or having long life, but it's also about having good deeds, be able to perform lots of good deeds. So Prophet said, if someone amongst yourself who is who had a long life, who lived for long in this world, and he had uh, uh, he had uh, the chance and opportunity to perform lots of good deeds, amal as salih, then he is the best one. Now, culturally, there's also an understanding. Well, we are young now. Let us enjoy the life. When we grow older, we'll go to Hajj. We'll rectify ourselves. <laughs> now, we, yeah, yeah. we do notice that nothing is guaranteed in life, but there's some sort of understanding. Because I'm young, um, I will, inshallah, have whatever enjoyment Allah, uh, the world has, is, has, I mean, is there available for me. And then after a certain age, I'll reform myself, rectify myself, become more religious and abandon those ill or bad habits that the society might think. Um, how I do mean, we... Uh, this is obviously, I think it's, it's, it's the lack of understanding of people about their life, about the qadr or the, or the azal. You know, people sometimes, they, they forget, <coughs> they forget their how long they will be staying in this world. So when we realize that the time of our departure or the day of our departure is, is it remained unknown, it wasn't disclosed, then we can understand that uh, our time is very temporary in this world. So we, we don't have any actually uh, specific time or guidelines about the timing that we'll start at that time. Some people say I will um, start praying from next or year. Or even Hajj, you yeah, know, the from next understanding. Year. Some people say I'll, I'll start praying from next year. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will start following the sunnah after I perform hajj. So again, these things, we cannot really rely on them because we do not know when we leave this world. So Prophet Sallallahu said in hadith, al kayisu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut. That a, a true uh, understanding, a, a wise man is the one who accounts himself and who prepares for the next world at all time. He's on a constant preparation, like a military, like an army. He is ready to leave this world and he is ready to meet Allah, the Almighty. Now, there's also another hadith people, many people, they probably know. Um, uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ The best one of you amongst, uh, amongst you, the best one of you is the one who had a long life and who managed to do a lot of good deeds. He is the best one. So you can see that Umar is important, meaning having a long life and being able to do a lot of good deeds, it has a virtue as far as Islam is concerned. Um, look at the beautiful hadith mentioned in the book of Imam Abu Dawood, on the authority of Abu Musa, عنه, uh, 
uh, uh, who says that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من إجلال الله تبارك وتعالى إكرام ذي الشيبة المسلم So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, if anybody respects Allah and honors Allah the Almighty then part of the honoring of Allah is to respect and honor the people who are old, the elderly people, elders. So part of respecting or honoring Allah is to respect also the people who are old in our society. And then he says, the ashayba, and those have gray hairs, gray beards, the gray hairs. Generally um, old people or elderly people. Wahamil al Quran and also respecting and honoring Allah the Almighty is also through respecting and honoring a Hafiz al Quran, someone who memorized, someone who is fortunate enough to memorize the Book of Allah the Almighty. But the one who also practices, but not only just uh, memorize and then he doesn't do anything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have unfortunately people who memorize the Holy Quran, but they do not give the rights of the, this glorious book. Or even if I say people who memorize the Quran, look at the way we treat them, as if like if someone has passed away, that's yes. when we need them. I mean, them. unfortunately, uh, we see this in our society that we, we look at the people who memorize the Holy Quran as as someone very ordinary and someone who is uh, only we, we invite them, feed them and give some money probably sometimes when someone dies or someone getting married or someone's probably doing aqiqah. So I remember one sheikh, he said that, you know, an imam is called only at the time of marriage, sorry, at the time of aqiqah, marriage, and janazah. So that's when an imam is, is called or invited. In our society, that's how, that's how it is. And I have seen numerously, I've seen repeatedly people actually undermine the people of knowledge, especially those who are spirit, Islamic or religious people, they look down upon them. আমাদের সমাজের মধ্যে অনেক লোক রয়েছে আমি দেখেছি এবং আমি অবজার্ভ করেছি যে যারা আলিম সমাজ বা যারা হাফিজে কোরআন ওদেরকে একটু ডিসক্রিমিনেশন বা যাকে বলা হয় যে ওদেরকে তেমন একটা রেসপেক্ট ডিউ রেসপেক্ট দেওয়া হয় না is it because they are not being able to present themselves as they are supposed to do partly this could be yes uh, there are th there are some truth in it that we uh, many of us probably couldn't prove ourselves to be qualified enough or uh, you know couldn't prove ourselves to be good enough but at the same time we have people who are very influenced by the secular mentality when i say secular mentality meaning that we have a negative view on religious people generally uh, be whether someone qualified or able or, or who, who has uh, a lot of uh, abilities, still we look down upon them and that's very unfortunate. So even the, maybe the religious look someone might have, yes. uh, so yeah. the skull cap or a beard yes. and we label them and, as and religious. And unfortunately, we as Muslims, being a Muslim, we do this and and we find uh, like much, sometimes we find much more respect from non-Muslims that when you uh, wear, I mean, I have been wearing like uh, the religious um, traditional clothes uh, through from my childhood. And uh, when I used to go to like the, the colleges, I used to wear, still wear the thobe. And I, I, I found good uh, contacts from non-Muslims. And when I uh, went to, uh, uh, in country, we, I, I received like probably negative or bad behavior from some Muslims. So you can see like we, we have to still uh, uh, work on the side of respect towards the religious symbols. Um, on that note, my dear viewers, it's a perfect time. It's time for a short commercial break. Sheikh has touched upon two very important aspects in this segment. Number one is our youth. When we look to our elders, when we speak to our elders, we need to treat them with utmost respect, even though they might say or do something that we might think is not directly from the Quran or Sunnah or the authentic sources, but yet we have to talk, we have to communicate in a way that is respectful and utmost dignified way. And the second thing he touched upon is we should not undermine people who are religious, people who are ulama, shuyukh, mashayikh, and most importantly, even if they dress in a traditional religious way, we should give them the utmost respect and respect to those people who deserve. It's time for a short break. Inshallah, we'll be right back after a few moments. We are watching Towards the Origin. Wassalamu alaikum. Perfect break time.
You touched on secular Hagalo is Walita. It's fine. You explained it. Because I'm the third man of the world. Because when you asked about the religious, I had to ask uh, the human interventions. Because we have to be careful how we say it. This is good. That's fine. Because we maintain the law side. The law side as well. And uh, the other side of the world as well. The, the critics would say, well, how can Hawaii would be wrong? If Allah has sent something then, and then changing it myself, so that means now it's not consistent. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? The one you know, the the Bible, then amended. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. No, 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 I understand. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, by people, yes. It's yes. invented because of the human intervention. Hmm. Very true. Yeah, Allah, how is 